Alright, so, so in less than 12 or so hours time, we are going to be getting the new and first Endemon banner of the year 2023, the Mana Summons, featuring Sun Sun, Orihime, and also Yumechika. And as always, we're going to break down the banner, letting you lads know everything you need to know before summoning on this particular banner. And for those wondering, is this banner actually worth summoning on? I would actually say so. I think it's a pretty good banner. The three new characters coming to the game tomorrow are all actually worth getting your hands on. But it really comes down to if you actually want the characters. Like, they'll be good to have, but keep in mind, they are also seasonal characters. So they will also be back occasionally throughout the entire year. You might still want to continue saving for those more limited banners, like the potential Thousand Year Blood War banners coming this year, Burn the Witch, and also Spirit Software with you. So do keep that in mind, as always, before summoning, right? But with that said, let's have a look at the actual availability day. It's currently going to be coming out tomorrow, 30 first at 7 in the morning for me and will be lasting until the 12th. As always, you can get your Senka model to next month and then use it on this particular banner. And as of right now, because we still have rerun epic raids, in this case the Toshiro Awakened epic raider, we actually don't know what rerun banners are coming out next month. So we're basically going in blind. But in my opinion, if end of month February has a very likely chance to be Spirits Arthur with you. And if you are someone potentially wanting to save for Beyond Bankai Mayuri or Gin, you might want to start saving also those particular characters because they have a very high chance of appearing sometime within the next two months. But let's talk about the three new characters coming to the game, why you might want to summon for them, and why you might actually want to use them. So first we have Orihime, a speed range strong attack character. All of her attacks can inflict paralysis except her SA2, as her SA2 is a barrier and also boost move. She comes with the Hollow Killer, and the most notable thing about this character is actually that SA2. As already mentioned, it is a boost in barrier, but it is a good SA2 because she does have the multi-barrier skill, turning that barrier into a 5-hit barrier for herself and a 3-hit barrier for your teammates. Alongside that, she has Enhancer, increasing the length of the boost to 20 seconds, and then with the booster skill, it's giving your teammates and yourself a 43% attack focus and defense boost. That's really good, and with a great set of strong attacks, overall, this just makes her a very solid character. I think her main usage is going to be seen in Arena. We'll talk about why in a minute, but also in Guild Quest content. We are starting to see more characters come with this booster skill, and if you are someone that wants to have an easy time taking on the ranged Hollow Guild Quest, having her as a support is going to be really good, as she's giving you those extra bit of stats, providing you with that extra bit of support with the barrier. And at the same time, Orihime also does have complete stats immunity, so she can stand whatever she wants to in any particular status on pool, and that will be giving you the immunity to set status on it. But having a look into Arena, if you do level up at Arena abilities, you can actually pick up Poise, increase special move usage plus one, and also the start path item plus two. As a human character, no one's really gonna have killer against her, but she's gonna make for a pretty decent Arena character, nothing anything super special, but good enough to be used, especially alongside some of these more meta-defining Arena characters. What is special about this character though, is that she does come with a new Arena Soul Trait, strong attack damage plus 30%, and also last the survival rate plus 15%. Last Ditch as a whole has kind of been swept out of the meta for the most part. And with this character and potentially more links like this, we might start to see more Last Ditch Survival Soul Traits. And with the meta of all these hard-hitting SP characters like Thousand Year Blood War Ichigo, the goal nowadays is just to defeat your opponent as fast as possible. But with this, even though it's only 15%, it will activate quite often, and that could potentially slow down the enemy's team. And alongside the fact that she also has multi-barrier, this character, while not going to be super offensive, does appear to be a quite good defensive SP character character, which is kind of something that we've never really seen before in the arena meta. So Orihime as a whole is going to be a very good guild quest support, really good in arena, and overall just a good enough character to be used in normal PV content. If you want yourself a new, fun to play, really useful Orihime, this is a character you might want to pick up. Then after that, we have Sun Sun, a hot mini strong attack character where all of her attacks can inflict burn except her SA3 because the SA3 is a heal move that can also be charged up. The most important thing about this character is the new introduction of the Mind Link's or Potion plus 5 Soul Traits. So this not only means that she herself can farm Link's or Potions, you can also give it to other characters, allowing them to now become Link's or characters. Or at the same time, you can put this on already existing Link's or characters to now get 10 additional potions. It really comes down to you what type of player you are. Personally, for me, I'm going to be using characters that I enjoy to use, like Six Anniversary Eisen, for example. And if I could get him this Link and give him plus 5 Link's or Potions, that is going to be absolutely crazy for the Torusha Awakened Epic Raids. And I do believe this introduction of this particular Soul Trait is something that you want to get your hands on because it therefore means you can just use any character you want to to farm links or potions and that's going to be a great quality of your life assuming you actually pull the character. 
But regarding how good of a Link she actually is, she's also a really good character. In this case, she does have Captain Killer, so she is going to be good against the Awakened Social Epic Raid, where unfortunately she isn't actually going to be a bonus. But still, that extra 40% damage is going to be great, especially alongside her overall damage output being quite high. With Frenzy plus one, a 40% Berserker, 20% more damage when at full stamina, and also, again, once more at full stamina, you then get an additional 40% strong attack damage. This is going to allow her to be a very hard-hitting character in epic raids which is where you want to use her and with that charge strong attack free that can heal your teammates that's also going to be really good for keeping them alive keeping yourself at full stamina and also just allowing you to do a lot more damage so overall sun sun is going to be a very good epic raid farm especially for this month where we have a, a captain epic raid boss but at the same time if you don't want to use her you can always link her to some better characters and then allow them to farm link swap potions small advice though if you do get duped of this particular character i recommend keeping them because that link is very valuable and if you actually do end up getting free sun suns you can use those links on free heart characters let's say other links or characters to guarantee yourself 30 links or potions and at that point you can actually unironically farm it single player iz it is going to take a lot of setup, and not a lot of us, myself included, will be able to do that starting tomorrow. But over time, once you do get a couple times, guaranteeing yourself 30 links or potions in single player IZ is actually going to be really good. It's going to be less ideal than Epic Raids, for example. But single player IZ isn't even that hard. You can easily auto it. And with a team like that, you can basically never have to play co-op ever again. So for you single player enjoyers that don't like co-op content, definitely look into trying to get free sun sun sometime in the future. And then lastly, we have Yuma Chica. And ironically, one of the better power characters in the game. He himself is a ranged strong attack character with the Avranka kill ability, and he does come with a new team buff power attribute character's movement speed at plus 30%. So very similar to what we saw with the most recent Beyond Bank Economy. Yumachika's whole thing is that he is the ultimate power farmer. And with that, he comes with the Technique Droplet Drop Rate plus 30%, plus five additional Technique Super Links or Potions, and also plus five additional Super Technique Links or Potions. A character with all three already has insane value. You can use them in IZ, Epic Raids, and of course, also IT. And because this character wants to be used in co-op content, he comes with two great team buffs that allow your team to be a lot better. As already mentioned, he increases their movement speed by 30%, which can also be useful in point event farming. But most importantly, he also does buff their strong attack damage by 20%, allowing your overall team just to hit harder. In addition to that too, if you're playing an IT, for example, in Heritage Trials, he also heals your entire team by 20% every time you move to another map. With Frenzy plus one and a 60% Berserker, overall, he's going to be a very good character. But then it gets even better because of a good strong attack hit, and most importantly, guard break with Pierce Iron Skin, he is also the best power character to be used in Inheritance Trials. Very similar to Fowers in your Blood War, Ichigo, and also Uryu, this character is going to make IT look like an absolute cakewalk. And the fact that he guarantees you super links or potions, links or potions, and also droplets, this makes him one of the best power characters in the entire game, and one of the most, or the most valuable power character in the entire game. And who would have thought they'd do all that on a Yumichika? So the three banner characters are all great. They all have value. They're all characters you're definitely going to use. But how about the other characters in the banner? For starters, Aizen is mainly a guild quest character. That's where you're mainly going to use him. Very rarely will you use him outside of guild quests. But he is designed for the melee Aspada guild quest where he just does significantly more damage, especially as a Nad side character with a crowd control vortex SA2. He's going to be a good support. Telsho is an epic grade farmer as he does guarantee you five additional heart links or potions and also 30% extra heart droplets. With a debuff soul bomb with weakened defense, after using a soul bomb, it will allow your team to do quite a lot of damage. Gin is just an okay SP character. He does have sharpshooter, which is nice, but he doesn't really have anything else going for him. Mainly just can be used as a side and go quest to buff someone like Yamamoto. Lottie is a heart no affiliation killer. Nothing anything too special since she did come out two years ago, but since she is an Aranka character, maybe she might have a use on a certain Senkum on stage because it's a rare affiliation killer combo. Retsu, just an average SP character. Nothing too special. And Ririka, while she is quite outdated compared to some of these new power link slot characters she is at the end of the day a power link slot character so if you don't have anyone else you can always use her and she does the job quite decently especially in epic grade content the ban is going to be your usual step up formula so step 1 6 11 16 and 21 will be discounted at 150 orbs step 2 7 12 17 and 22 will be discounted at 200 orbs and every fifth step you are guaranteed a featured character which of course includes one of these nine characters so overall that's the banner i think is a very good banner i myself am actually missing five characters on this so i'm definitely gonna be doing the first two steps and also buy the ticket and hope just to walk away with one of them i can see myself using yumachika in it epic raids 
and also Droplet Zone. I can see myself using Orihime in Arena and also as a port in Guild Quest, many alongside Thousand Year Blood War Yamamoto. And then Sun Sun, while I could also see myself using her, I'm also interested in that link, mainly just so I can use other characters to farm epic raids, again, like Six Anniversary Aizen. And while it's true, again, I can get them later on, I kind of also want to get dupes of them. So picking them up now, potentially within the first two steps or the ticket, if I'm lucky enough, is definitely something that I'm interested in. I think this is a banner that is worth summoning on. But again, as always, it comes down to if you want these characters. I myself want them, but I'm still going to limit myself. I'm going to do two steps and buy the ticket because I know I will get them later down the year. I don't need them desperately right now. But if I do get them, it would be good. I'm still more so interested in saving for more the limited banners like Spirits Laugh over you, Gin and my Yuri, which again might be coming out next month. Still waiting for our first initial Thousand Year Blood War anime banner, which is also potentially going to come out within the next three or so months. And then also Burn the Witch. We still have no idea when that's going to happen, but I want to make sure I have orbs for it. So ideally, I don't really want to spend too much on a banner like this when I know I will get them later down the year. But that's just my opinion in the comments below. Let me know your summon plans for this banner. I wish you luck, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, and peace.